Hey Snackers, this week, Jason Davis is back to give us demos around Async I.O. on the next episode of DevNet Snack Minutes. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello Snackers, Kareem Iskander here. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 25 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun, easy way to learn about DevNet and what we do here. You guys might have joined us last week where we talked to Jason Davis about Async IO, and we got so excited about it, we asked him to come back and show us some demos with Async IO. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Jason, what do you have for us? Well, I thought we would try that walk, run, fly approach. And uh, that's really popular for us in DevNet, right? And let's start with looking at a basic Python script that just calls three different functions. And we're going to show what we're normally used to, which is calling functions right after the other in sequence. And this should have a very easily understandable and expected output. We get into a function, we sleep for a couple seconds, we leave it. Then we go into the second function, print out, sleep for four seconds, leave it. Third one, sleep for six seconds, right? We shall understand this pretty basic Python script. So we're kick this one off. Went into the function, two seconds. Next function, four seconds. Third function, six seconds. This is nothing earth shattering. But if these sleep functions were actually some kind of blocking activity, an API call, a very disk IO intensive kind of activity, uh, we might want to look at using async IO like we talked about last week. So let's move to taking this basic example. And now we're just going to slightly modify it to use this async definition in front of our function. And then we do some uh, new Python 3.7 capability to call async IO and say, run this event handler, right? and it will gather all of the function calls into essentially a list and then execute them in that event handler. And essentially what await says is, I am at a point in my program where I know I'm going to take some IO and it's gonna take some time to work. So you can give control and pause back to the event handler and have someone else schedule their work, right? So what we're going to see now, if we just go ahead and clear this out a little bit, give us some real estate and say run. Well, now we saw all three functions start, but now they're waiting for their sleeps, right? And then boom. So this actually ran in about six seconds, whereas before it would have taken two plus four plus six, right? Because we Im immediately jumped in. So how do I handle if I have... So I'm firing off three different functions at the same time. I'm expecting a response from these functions. How do I know which function has responded to me when? You could put a return comment in. You could do a print statement. It'll essentially allow you to handle awaiting the result and finality of that previous function. That's the beauty of this event scheduler working for us is that it recognizes that there are some activities that are paused. That means there are other activities that are waiting in queue and it can run those until it hits another pause. And we just did a very simple example of a blocking feature by doing a sleep function. But let's have some fun with this and let's go move on to an API call that would actually be over the network and uh, re representative of something we do a lot of, which is REST API calls. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of deckofcardsapi.com and we're going to do some API calls to them. And we're going to say, let's just draw cards as fast as the API will allow us to go. Uh, we're going to do two decks, so 104 cards, right? So what we should get back, just if we look at a standard JSON record, if we get this uh, JSON record back, it's going to tell us the value and the suit of the card. So let's go ahead and do a blocking version of this. It's just very, very standard. Uh, Python requests module, just give it to me 104 in a loop and then extract out the value and the suit of the card. If we run it, 104 cards, here we go. Eight of hearts, king of spades, 
et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's going. So as we're sitting here waiting for this, this is when like a, U a YouTuber meme would put in one of those time clocks and like a, a moments later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I do have a quick question. This is running in the previous example where we saw the gather, uh, where we saw the, the gather function. Um, the functions as they call them in order, uh, is it is it based on the order that you have them in that in that tuple, or is it um, you know does it tick them off immediately, uh, you know, or or can you manage the order that those functions are called with that gather gather method? You can play around with the order of execution. Uh, you can even update the event queue to add more work to it uh, if you need to do so. Uh, it's kind of the idea okay. of consumers and providers, right? A provider would put more work into a queue and a consumer would take work off of it. Uh, you can do go that way. And what we just saw was 104 cards going sequentially. This API gave it back to us in 33.2 seconds. Now let's go modify this sl slightly to allow for async IO. And we're going to use a new library called AIO HTTP, which is essentially a rewritten requests library that has more capability to await the API work and to identify that I have an event that's ready to work or I'm still waiting for work to be done and feeds that status back up to our handler, right? And so that's um, here what happens with async IO run, say run main. Well, we go to our main, we're gonna run async against client sessions. So we're gonna be able to manage how the uh, the client web request for REST API is doing its work. Are we still waiting? No, we got something back. Okay, then it's time to ask the CPU for another slice at the, at the clock, right? We're gonna do the same thing, 104 cards, let's run it. Remember it took us 33.2 seconds, one right after the other, and it looks like it's running faster, doesn't it? Definitely running faster. <laughs> and this is where drum roll is. It's happening if you're a YouTube memer. So 20, 21.5 seconds. Um, I've seen it actually take only eight seconds. So in the real time that we were just running it against, you know, the real internet, there was a little bit of lag, but still we, we got a good 10 or 11 seconds back that we would have been waiting longer. Um, so a three or four fold increase is not reasonable. Keeping in mind too that, that we're testing against an, an open API that, that just returns some data if if you know if you're doing this in production and you're you know you're going against uh, a Meraki network or you're going against your uh, you know your infrastructure and it's waiting shaving off that much you know what is that 10 15 13 seconds uh, yeah. is huge it's so it's seven point here we go seven oh, there seconds. we go so there you go that's fantastic so so with that said do you have a a, a use case that you've worked on using this library that has helped you or is that something that you're allowed to share with us? Yeah, I've, I've been using this mostly with Meraki type use cases where we needed to pull down a lot of equipment information through the, the Meraki dashboard API. The API is also a rate limiting you to five API calls a second, right? So what would you rather do, write a sequential type use case where it just, you know, there's more opportunity to get more data or if you threw too much at it and it tells you to back off, then you end up incurring weights. So we would rather write programs that would sit there right at the guardrail of hitting those uh, 529 errors to back off, right? And, and say, you know what? I don't wanna have to wait, but I'm gonna manage my own thread and semaphore counts so I can get as much as I can out of that rate limited environment. Jason, this is awesome. Thank you for these these great demos. I'm really excited to actually start implementing async IO in some of my projects. Uh, but before we let you go, uh, we ask all of our guests one very important question. So what would be your superpower if you could pick one and why? Um, it would be a sense of smell because then I could smell out, you know, Kareem stinker code more often. <laughs> <laughs> Man, shot across the bow. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right, Snackers. Jason, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us uh, today and on our previous episode. Uh, this has been fun. Snackers, thank you for your time and join us next week on our new episode of DevNet Snack Minute.